this is Walter Jones. This is Austin St. John. And you're listening to Ranger Danger. Go, go, Ranger Danger. This is the Mutiny Part 2, Episode 2, a Season 2 of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Lots two. of twos going on there. Two, two, two. Absolutely. Yep. I'm Matt. Michael. I'm Tim. I'm back. Tim is here. Our website is www.rangerdangerpodcast.com. You can send us an email yep. at rangerdangerpodcast at gmail.com. Yep. You can tweet at us at Ranger Decast on Twitter. Uh, we have Facebook. We have iTunes. We have Google+. Plus. We have YouTube where you can subscribe. Yep. Stitcher. Stitcher. We're all over the damn joint. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we have a cool new website. It just depends on how busy I am over the next couple of weeks. But Well, the past couple of weeks. But yeah, hopefully we've got a cool new website. So go check that out. And if it's the old website, send me an email and tell me to get on it. Yep. Abuse Michael. Yeah. That's what I do. That's fine. <laughs> so a couple of things we're going to cover. Yep. First of all, RJ is a Power Ranger. Oh. He is the Jungle Fury Wolf Ranger. Obviously. I don't know why you missed it, to be honest. I apologize to everyone. What color is he, Michael? Uh, he, well, he's purple, kind of. Okay. His designation is wolf, but he is purple colored. Okay. Uh, the reason we didn't find him when we looked is that he's called Robert James. I see. They just call him RJ. Gotcha. So, I got 40. <laughs> Booyah. There we go. That's all that matters. Good thing you got that. Otherwise, you wouldn't have won by like 18 points. <laughs> Uh, so the second thing I wanted to talk about is Lord Zed's appearance. Yes. So we talked last week about how he's a horrifying monstrosity. Yes, that's true. Apparently later in the show, Rita provides a potential explanation, although it may have been said as a joke. She says it mockingly, so it's unclear. Okay. I'm going to read this to you. Yep. Lord Zed's appearance is usually explained as a result of his attempt to capture the Zeo crystal millennia ago. Oh, I know the Zeo crystal. The, it's a crystal from Zeo. Yeah. Mm. The people of the M51 galaxy placed a force field around the crystal that would destroy anyone evil who tried to take it from its tomb. Sure. Zed's skin and scalp may have been completely torn off, yeah. resulting in his somewhat grotesque appearance. I think we could strip somewhat from that. Yeah, I was going to say somewhat <laughs> is generous. Like, <laughs> So, there you go. Right. Uh so he is a dude who was turned into a monster. What I'm going to say is that that's not really something to joke about, Rita. <laughs> Remember that time your skin and scalp were stripped from you? Like, don't do that. That's rude. It's uncool. Probably true his PTSD. Yeah. Right? That's probably a traumatic event. He is kind of an a-hole back, though, so like... Yeah. yeah. All right. So the third thing, uh, right now our time, so a couple of weeks ago for you guys... Um, it was the airing of the Super Mega Force finale, which we've spoken about on the podcast previously. So if you've just seen it, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, to commemorate that, to kind of celebrate it, to kind of get people excited about it. Jazzed about it. Jazzed, sure, I guess. Yep. Uh, if this was the 1920s, that would be the word you would use. Mm -hmm. um, the Power Rangers Instagram people handed over their Instagram to five former Rangers. Yep. One a day for a week. Uh Look, they didn't really use Instagram like you'd normally use it, I guess. They just took some photos that were like, hey, this is me. I still am not ashamed of being on Power Rangers. Yeah. So those and actors... Just to be clear, they're all actors who appeared in the Megaforce yes. uh, finale as well. Uh, so they are Melody Perkins, who was Corone Lost Galaxy Pink. Yep. And also Astronomer. No, I'll say it. That's a spoiler, people. It's a though. I think 20 years ago, either you know or you don't. Yeah, but the people who die anyway. Uh... <laughs> Reggie Roll, who was Lost Galaxy Green. Yep. Uh, and also is married to the villain of Lost Galaxy. Oh, that's which cool. Which is beautiful. That's nice. Uh, Danny Slavin, who was Lost Galaxy Red. Yeah, can we talk about that? Let's get to him when we okay. finish the list. Jason Fawnt, who was Time Force Red. Yep. And uh, then Jason David Frank, who was Tommy and all of the colours that that entails. Yeah. So let's talk about each of them. Let's start with Danny Slavin, because his is the best. Yes. Uh, his shows him getting ready to go to work as a lawyer. Yes. Going to work as a lawyer, being a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Um, Amazing. The story goes that he did Power Rangers 
solely to pay for law school, knowing that he wanted to become a lawyer. He did it. He gave up acting, never acted again. Returned to the show twice as the Red Ranger, but just became a lawyer. Yep. It's great. I love that story. Something about it is just so perfect. Because it's so brilliant, because 95% of the actors on that show did not go on to have real like proper acting careers I think really. we I think we talked I think there's maybe five or six of like 150 in the history of the show yeah who have gone on to be it, actors an incredibly low success rate whereas he went in with a plan pulled it off flawlessly is on his path that he yep. wants to be on yeah he used the money to do the thing that he wanted to do yep and um, despite that he's not ashamed of it like we've got a photo of him here at his lawyer desk yeah holding up a Lost Galaxy Red figure with another Lost Galaxy Red figure and the Lost Galaxy Red Ranger key and the Japanese Ranger key. Yeah. Like, he's clearly... I mean, look, I can't imagine that those are permanently on his desk. Oh, um, but... Yeah, they could be. The idea that he's got them and yeah. he's holding, like, his helmet... But his helmet is just on his bookshelf with all his lawyer books. I really do... Look, I really want to think that it's there all the time. Yeah. I, I don't know that it would be. I certainly know that, for me, if I needed a lawyer in whatever he did, yep. he certainly got an advantage over all the other lawyers. It is a selling point, Just, yeah. Like, what's his hourly rate? Because I'll pay it to chat to him about Lost Galaxy for a couple of hours. Yeah. Um, the That's others... not a bad idea. <laughs> if we just save up... Like, yes, we need a legal consultation. We have to record it for legal purposes. <laughs> We're going to ask you about Power Rangers now. Do you think he gets those calls more frequently than you'd want? Probably. Um, the rest of them are all pretty standard. Jason Ford's got lots with what I assume is his daughter. Oh, that's nice. Um, he's, you know, holding his action figures. Yep. Uh, Reggie Rolls kind of is trying to make him look cooler than he probably is. Yes, I do. But he does have what is definitely a shelf of Power Rangers memorabilia. Yep. Um, you can see there what, I don't know if you know, these were like Lost Galaxy toys they had like their own capsule things all right and he's got all of them and stuff still in packaging that's not set up that's his display of stuff yeah that's pretty cool that is cool i'm pr- a pretty big fan of that yeah uh jason david frank hasn't done it at this point but i think we're all as familiar with jason david frank as we could be as we need to be um melody perkins is probably more attractive than when she was on the show 20 years ago <laughs> it's, a, it's a hard call um, it's kind of messed up. Yeah. No, look, really nice to see them all. Yeah. Um, they all appear to be, you know, happy and happy and successful. Successful and not ashamed. Well, the ones they asked are. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice to see that they're not like you know, just on cocaine and. They couldn't afford cocaine. Lying, lying in an alley talking yeah, about Coke is, they, Coke is a rich man's drug. <laughs> like. They used to be a Power Ranger once. You know, yeah. it's nice to see some people who have got other things. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just nice. It's nice, I agree. It's nice. All right, the mutiny part two. Yeah. Probably won't be nice. You know, I expect it's going to be the Empire Strikes Back of this trilogy. I mean, that's probably going to be too much credit. I suspect it's going to be the Attack of the Clones of this trilogy. <laughs> um, wow. Ooh. Not bad. That's probably too but... mean. <laughs> All right, let's go check that out. Yep. And we'll be back in a sec. See you soon, guys. All right, so that happened to us. <laughs> you know how we were talking about multi-part episodes that have episodes that are just completely unnecessary. Yes. And time wasting. Yep. There it is. It happens. We made a bit of progress. Did we though? In the situation of the Zords. I'm not even sure about that. Like it it was a really shitty introduction to them. It pretty much was. There's a lot of inconsistent logic. Because when we finally get to see the Zords, we see that they're not just new swords, they're the old Zords transformed. Yep. But then we see in this episode, apparently they're just out there hanging out while the Transformers Rex or Yeah, look, let's, let's get up to that, shall we? Yeah. So, uh, at the start, still the old intro. Yep. Which uh, is kind of dumb with Rita going, after 10,000 years, I'm free. Yes. Now that we know that she is... No longer free. No longer free again. Yes. Um, but that's fine. I guess they didn't want to blow the Thunder Zords on... A halfway episode. Like, on the reveal in the intro. Yeah. yeah. Which I is fair is enough. Okay. I still think you could find ways around that. Like, maybe they need the Thunder Megazord to defeat the creature, but there's some sort of problem with forming the actual Megazord formation. They have to do that in the third episode. It's okay. 
<sighs> it did suck. It did really suck. Was... Okay, so we've still got the Tyrannosaurus Zord. Yeah. The rest of the Zords are frozen. Why is that, Michael? Uh, yes. <laughs> because all five rangers put their hands in the sky and said, we need Tyrannosaurus Zord power. No, that's not why he's free. He's free because he never got frozen. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We didn't see him get frozen last mm-hmm. week. Right. Classic Paranda's head. Yep. Uh, so he jumps from the clouds. Yeah. Which is great. That was pretty cool. Uh, and Goldar on the moon goes, oh shit, they've still got that one. Yeah. Uh, I've seen how this goes. Yeah. Even with one we're going to lose. Yeah. And Lord Z goes, no, I thought about that. It's the plan. Yeah. Paranda said he's going to make it an evil Zord and then it's going to crush them itself. I'm so glad someone had a plan today, like, <laughs> honestly. It's a good plan. Yeah. It's an effective plan. Yep. Uh, go Lord Z. Yeah, absolutely. He's one for one at the moment. He sure is. I mean, the Power Rangers aren't dead yet, but I'm They're sure they'll die next week. Probably. It'll it probably be the, the, the depressing end of the show. Yeah, and then they replace them with new ones. That's what happens with the new Rangers, right? Yeah. The yeah. other three get squashed by the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Mm. It's a dark show. It is. Uh, so Tommy's back at the command center recharging his powers yeah we get some shots this week of the command center that i think are new Mm. showing like around zordon and what the situation is there oh i didn't really notice that kind of broader shots of the command center right that show there's like an orange red gradient wall Hmm. the entire building is very ugly yeah. Which you can see in the normal shots of Zordon. Yes, but the normally does The purple extend. blue a- area of that, yeah. so yeah. Uh, so we get like a nice shot of Tommy in the middle from about where the viewing globe would be. Yeah. With Zordon behind him. It's like the movie poster shot. It's pretty cool. Um, so, you know, they recharge his powers a bit. I don't know why they don't do that when it's not urgent. But anyway... It did seem like kind of risky and dire. Like, I guess I can temporarily charge you back up, but I can't risk any more. And yeah, I think they sold that sure. okay. So he summons the Dragon Zord. Yeah. At which point, Lord Zed says, oh, "Yeah, I'll take control of the Dragon Zord as well." Uh, yes. How did they not see that coming? By the way, <laughs> yeah, that was silly. But there was a pretty cool Dragon Zord on Transformer Sword fight. That's true. That was that sure. Was fine. So um, he t- he gets Parantis to take control of the, th- the Dragon Sword, which is weird because like he gets his staff, he shoots lightning, presumably at Parantis head. Parantis head plays his fish nunchucks, <laughs> which blows shoots out, a jet of water, shoots out like steam or something and that, that controls the Zord. Yeah, it's, it's a long process. It is. <laughs> it's well, you know, there's all the paperwork you can yeah. do to take over a Megazord. It's like buying a car. You've got to. You it's know, not easy. You've got to get the VIN number. You've got to make sure the owner is transferred. You've got to get his Megazord insurance. Yep. It's complicated. A lot of red tape. Yeah. <laughs> this is just one big metaphor for corporate culture here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so the Dragon Zord and the Tyrannosaurus Zord start attacking the Rangers. Yeah. The Dragon Zord in particular swipes them with its definitely not to scale tail. Yeah, that was percent not to the scale. The tail is like. The size of their chests. I would say on the Zord, it's about as... The tail is about as round as the Dragon Zord's head. Yeah. Mm. And we've seen Tommy stand on the head and look small. We've also yeah. seen that tail, like, drilled through the walls of buildings, yeah. so... Yeah, it should, And through the torsos of monsters. Mm. It should, by all accounts... Have crushed them have all. crushed them. Yeah. And instead, it's just like, well, jump back, everybody. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, oh well so Zordon says it's fortunate that they anticipated Lord Zed's return <sighs> this shit killed he him. is such an asshole. Alpha is. please commence phase 2 yeah please commence season 2 <laughs> <laughs> look I buy that if Lord Zed was his biggest fear yeah he thought something may happen we may need better Zords yeah that's okay I've just had it like up to here in He's got so much shit up his sleeves that he yes. doesn't tell anyone about. Yes. There have been situations in the past where stronger Zords would have come in a lot of handy. Yes. That we did not pull them out. It's just a low energy way to invoke them as well. It's yeah. not like, oh, the Mega Swords are destroyed. We're going to have to find some way to retool them quickly and get yeah. on top of this. It's like, no, nah, they've been here all along. We so had them ready. That's fine. It's, yeah. it's not a problem. Yeah. Anyway. Bah. <laughs> 
It makes you so angry. So angry. And then the next scene yeah. is just so lame. Well, it's not quite the next scene. Well, can we get it out of the way? No, I just want to cover this because this raises an interesting question, right? Yeah. What they say is if they can get onto the roof, into the Zord and to the controls, yeah. they can take control of the, me- of the Zords back. Yeah. Raises some interesting questions to me about, like, free will of the Zords. Yeah. And, like, their sentience. It's an ongoing question, I think, with this show, because some of them seem to have more sentience than others. Yeah. Some of them For seem... example, the Dragon Zord. Yeah. And then there's Titanus, which seems to be, like... Have... Just a dude. Just a, just a yeah. guy. Yep. Yeah. Um, but then we see Zords later get destroyded, or... Minus spoiler warning with these ones they get actually turned into the yeah. thunder zords like what happens to their consciousness yeah like do do the controls does using the controls override their free will because yeah. that's Is creepy that horrific or do they like know do they, they suggestions have, do they know they have controls and go right you're taking control because it's your like you need to do this yeah it's just yeah, sometimes when you say, oh, yeah, it's got free will until we take control of it, you don't think through the implications. Yeah, and then there's, like, Tommy's next Zord, yep. which seems to have a full personality of turn and build, like, a real partnership with him. Yep. And then he just, like, abandons it later for a new one, <laughs> and you never hear from it again. It's like, what? You just... That was a guy. Yep. That was a real dude who had a close bond with you. You know, and sometimes dudes in their Zords fall apart. Yeah. Anyway, so... Before we get to the bit that you hate, yeah, I think last week and this week are our first helmetless scenes. Mm. That is, Rangers in costume, no helmets. Yeah. Do you have feelings about helmetless scenes? I don't like them. Really? Yeah. I love them. Really? They are absolutely my favourite thing about the show. To me, it creates this weird middle ground where yes, I don't absolutely. like. absolutely. Because they're not Power Rangers yeah. there, but they're not people. Civilians. Sure. And it's like. What at where, what point do they become Power Rangers? Like, is the helmet the last thing, and they put the helmet? It's like, do you mean in terms of like they get physical strength and stuff yeah, that's like right. that? Like, how does that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I just I prefer that like maybe the suits are like some sort of energy thing, and mm-hmm. that when they're superheroes, they're there. When they're not superheroes, they're not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like that weird middle. I place. certainly understand that. But I feel like the the visual potential of the rangers in suits but looking like dudes and the dudes you know overrides all of those concerns. I think because the helmets are so dehumanising. Yeah. Mm. It makes them dudes in suits. Yeah. Not- it's just like, why do they morph if they can just put on this clothes? It does create mm-hmm. some fascinating questions like, when Justin takes off his helmet, what happens? Does he have a child head <laughs> on a large on body? On a large body, yeah. Or what's the the answer? Of course, is yes. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's kind of like a Muppet man in a trench coat. Like a <laughs> is what it would look like. I really like the thought that Justin is a dude who's got like arm extensions and leg and extensions, extensions. <laughs> and just he stands in the in suit, like, a, yeah. like on stilts. He's just really good at it. That would yeah. be great. Anyway, so uh, we get a slow motion walk out of the command center. Oh, yeah, God, that's gold. That's gold. gold. And they had to be holding their helmets for that one. Yeah. 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 Alpha's strut in that scene is hardcore. Like, that's, that's probably like, the top of the episode. Is Alpha just like marching out. So they go and they, in a poorly composited shot, stand outside. Very horribly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Terrible. They have one exterior shot of that building, which I'm pretty sure is like a Jewish museum in California or something. Yeah, and you bet they're going to use it. I guess they couldn't go back, God forbid. We've already blown all the budget on the motocross rally. Mm, yeah. So, you know, we're just going to CG in five people, not to scale. Yeah. When they're CG'd in, yeah. which way are they facing? It's unclear. Because I... At first, got the impression that they were facing the camera. Yeah. Yeah. But then the things were uh, the in Zord, the sky behind them. In the sky behind them, so that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But I couldn't see it well enough to confirm visually. No, you're right. That they're you're facing wrong. the other way, and that the shots of them looking up are looking up to there, and then that makes spatial sense. Say, there was a shot in last week's episode when the Rangers had gotten off their bikes and before they teleported to the command center where they all faced away from the command centre to do it. Mm. Oh, sorry, they faced away from the camera yeah, I, I to recall. do it. 
I think the reason that that happened, and I forgot to mention it last week, is because they're in the opposite order when they're in the command center. I was going right. to say, it must be an order. And so thing. someone got, like, at some point, someone figured out, shit, we've got them in the wrong order, face away, and you'll arrive back the other way. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's unclear. So the Zords are in the sky, but they're not actually there. They're like... Apparitions. Spirits or apparitions or... Ghosts, oh, are they? Because we see them later, and they seem to be there. It's definitely unclear. Shit. And look, it's not a <laughs> it's not a great introduction to them. Uh, it's not the the red dragon sword in particular. Yeah, uh, looks black. Yeah, is really poorly coloured. I really did not think it was Jason's red sword. Yeah. I also have questions about what some of them are. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, the lion yeah. is not a mythological creature. No. Uh, the griffin yeah. does not look anything like, like a griffin. The griffin looks like a slab or a rectangle. The problem is that they're all based on Asian mythical creatures. Right. Okay. Because cool. the dragon is clearly a Chinese A, a dragon. Variant. That's right. We know dragons. But so. lions are then... Uh, they've got appropriate. A, yeah, I can't remember. What I'm it's got looking it up while you keep talking. Yeah. So basically, they're from the myths of different Asian cultures. Yeah. Most of them, Westerners aren't super familiar with. Um, but I think a few of them, when we like actually find the list, we'll be like, oh yeah, I know that one. And others will be a little more nebulous. I hope we find that list soon. Um. Okay, so the Firebird Thunderzord, yep. which is the flying Kimberly one, yep. is, I mean, it's a phoenix. Yes. A Firebird is technically an acceptable alternate name. I don't, I think it's a lame alternate name for a phoenix, but that's... <laughs> it's not as good a name as phoenix, that's yep. certainly true. I wonder if the worry was that kids wouldn't be able to spell it. I think it's just about spelling, I just don't think kids are super familiar with phoenixes, especially, like, pre-Harry Potter. That's example. probably mm. true, yeah. Um... The griffin is a griffin, hmm. but yeah, whatever. Yeah. The red dragon is definitely a Chinese dragon. Yeah, uh, so and a really cool one at that. Yeah, absolutely. The unicorn is actually a Pegasus. Yeah, which is obvious because it has, it has a wings. wing on either side and no horn. Yeah, I find people. I was going to say it didn't long. have a horn, and I found that upsetting. Yeah, I think Pegasus is no more or less complicated than a unicorn. You know. So why not Pegasus? I do think that a unicorn is probably more familiar to okay. kids. My con- my concern is that a unicorn is real specific about yeah. a horse with a horn. Sure. It's, and doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't have, doesn't have one. Yeah. So it's Disney's too- Hercules wouldn't be out for another like four years. Right. They like, wouldn't yeah. have seen a Pegasus. This is pre a lot of mythical creature media that would really be really formative in our lives. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the lion... Yeah. Look, this is the one that I can't fault them changing. Yeah. Because it is something called a Quillin or a Kirin. Yeah. Uh, it's like a Chinese unicorn, basically. It's basically like a mythical lion creature. Yeah. Like, no, it's it's got like, yeah, hooves and horns and antlers and, and stuff. But yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Um. It's well, cool. Though. It's pretty cool, but I certainly can't fault them for going. That's too far for... Sure, absolutely. Like, kids. I mean, my my instinct is to wish that there was a way you could just work that in and teach kids some stuff, yeah, but... Sure. I do think Sphinx they could maybe have gotten away with. Yeah, that's true. Which is, like, something that kids might have heard of. Yeah. But... Something that mum and dad certainly could clear up fairly quickly. I yeah. mean, in that scene where they do all that bullshit, like, it has the power of... <laughs> Wait, sorry, which scene? <laughs> sorry, when the Zords are in the sky. Right, okay. And that scene was all the bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're doing all the whole, oh, this Zord has courage and power. They could be like, this is a Kirin. It's a Chinese mythical creature, blah, 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 blah. Teach yeah, kids it's not Trini, so that wouldn't have been weird and awkward. <laughs> Can you imagine that? If he gave the other four of them, like... Greek myth monsters. Yeah. It's like you're Asian, right? You want like a you want a panda zord or something? I don't know. She's like, yeah, no, that's tight. I'm, that would that's be great. Awesome. The fact that we haven't seen a panda zord that I'm aware of is incredibly disappointing. It is actually. That's true. I don't think they're really considered like combat animals. <laughs> is the reason is why a giant fighting panda robot would be so rad? It would be quality media. Imagine yeah. if there was a black zord and a white zord. And they merge to become the panda megazord. Okay, but if they're merging, are they both bears? 
bears. Sure. Black bear, white bear. Oh, you, Shit, if you have yeah. like like a, a black bear and a polar, a polar bear. bear. Okay, I just accidentally had a real you cool idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just accidentally <laughs> made the idea better. Because I was thinking like, what are they like a black blob and a white blob and yeah. they fuse? But if they're both bears, that's right. Could it be a two-headed panda? Because you've got to have two, like you've got two whole bear bodies in the Zords, is what I'm thinking. Well, one could probably fold internally. Okay, yeah. but can it have extra arms? Yeah, absolutely. Because that's He's tight. Like a four-arm, four-leg panda monster. Well, yeah. two legs is enough. Okay. <laughs> Michael, just settle down. Okay. Anyway, we're imagining a Zord that is cooler than any Zord we will ever get. Yeah, but kind can, of. Can yeah. we just appeal to the listeners if yep. you want to design the panda Zord? Yep. And send us through some designs. I'd love to see it. We'd be so chuffed. Yeah. That would be super rad. Just to clarify the numbers of limbs and extremities, one head, four arms, two legs. I'd accept two arms. Well, also he has to have a giant bamboo staff. I but think, I think, if, yeah. I think we all kind of accept it. We all knew. We, we were definitely knew. already. That's there. fine. Yeah. If he's certainly, if he doesn't come with one, he uses a nearby skyscraper, <laughs> so it's fine. Uh, okay. So anyway, um, so that scene is a lump of shit. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> it's not ideal, certainly. <laughs> They can't get... Oh, and there's no... They ask about Tommy. Mm -hmm. There's no new Zord for him because they're not sure if he's going to get to keep his powers. Yeah. I did enjoy the shot of Kimberly looking over at him like, feel bad for that guy. (laughs) (laughs) To be fair, he still has a mega cool Zord. Yeah, like yeah, I know. But when everyone else is getting presents from Dad, sure, it'd be yeah. it's kind of a it's letdown. It's Christmas, and he doesn't get one because we're not sure if we're going to keep him. Yeah, we're not sure <laughs> if we're really adopting him or if he has to go back to the orphanage. I like that it's Kim that asks the question. That's not yeah. a nice touch. Yeah, because she she's the one who's keeping an eye on him and yeah. goes, yeah. "What about Tony?" Now, they can't get their new Zords. Yeah. without yeah. control of their old Zords. Yeah, this is not a solution to the problem. No. The problem is that Lord Zed has returned and has brought with him the ability to control their Zords. Yeah. They cannot get their new Zords to defeat Lord Zed yeah. without control of their old Zords. Yes. Also, that makes no sense. That's unexplained why that is. Yeah. Like, if you guys have mentioned they turn into... Yes. Yeah. Then it makes sense. Yes. But no one ever said that. No. And it and certainly if, doesn't look like that's what's going to happen. It's contradicted by the footage, and all I need to do is just not use that. Not shoot that one shot. Just say it, and look at B-roll for, of something else. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, look, spoiler warning, that's just footage from when the Megazords come out later. Obviously, yeah. So they're not losing anything by just not putting it in there. The yeah. footage won't go to waste, so you still get to use it. Oh. Show, show show Billy and Trini like working away and say we can't do it until they're done. Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean look, I'd even have accepted you can't use the new ones because then Lord Zed will just take control of them. So we need to figure out a way to block the signal first. Yeah, that's yeah. that's great and too. Then we can bring out That's the a great Zord. solution also. Right? That's None of these were presented to <laughs> us. These and more solutions were not given to us. I mean, ideally what this should have been is that the Zords are being mind controlled. Yep. We need to upgrade the Zords in some way that means that they're not vulnerable to that sort of attack. Mm. Yep. We may have to redesign the Zords totally to do this. Yeah. Alpha and Billy, go to the lab, do it as fast as you can. Uh, and that's your, your urgent time thing. Yep. They do it at the start of the next episode just in time. And then it's revealed that not only are the Zords like mind resistant, they're also brand rad, new. They're brand super new. Super rad. Yeah. It's exciting. Okay, so you're saying don't show them yeah, all. Yeah, hella rad surprise reveal yeah. at the start of part three. Yeah, that the Zords come out and then boom. Everyone's like, them. whoa, what's this? And like, oh yeah, by the way. Yeah. By the way, I was working on the Tyrannosaurus and I thought dinosaurs are cool, but wouldn't it be better if it was a flying dragon? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it would. It yeah. would, yes. Good call there, Billy. Yep. Billy, why did you make your kind of cool triceratops into just a weird unicorn pegasus thing? You know, it, it felt weird to just have a dragon and four dinosaurs. Yeah. So and we had to... It know, was odd. Yeah. We had to roll it out. Anyway, um, I had a thought. Yeah. How do you reckon parents and producers felt about the earring on Jason? Because in 1994, that's kind of bold and a bit rebellious. I think felt like probably why it was cool. Sure. Do you rebellious. think it's part of a concerted effort to make him cooler? Maybe. He does seem a bit cooler this season, is it just me? I think really? it's just better written. I think he seems like he's trying to be cooler. Right. 
and it's like in a kind of angsty forced cool way that I'm not on board with Fair enough. my feeling is that no one's really had anything to do yet yeah so it's we'll tough to gauge there's not been much opportunity for characterization yeah. <laughs> despite the fact Story that we're two ep- <laughs> despite the fact that we're two episodes in you think they could have snuck some development in but anyway anyway um so look Vulcan skull oh uh, Billy and Trini and Alpha are gonna go to Billy's lab and make a device to counteract Lord Zed's control signal. Yep. Sure. <sighs> and Trini and Billy seem to be getting relationship development. Does that progress? Or are they just, like, filling time? No, I think it's just that they need someone to go with Billy. And Trini's the one that makes the most sense out of all of them. Yeah. Because she's the most sensible and intelligent. She really is. Yeah. For, sure, for sure she <laughs> is the most sensible. Yeah. Um, you know, Kimberly going with Billy... You'd be expecting some sort of comical mishap, like their brains to swap. Yeah. Yeah, she's not the coolest, but she definitely should be the leader. Yes. Like, I don't question. know that I'd say that. I mean, I, I've defended Jason before in the past by saying his go-getter attitude is the glue that holds them together. Yeah, sure. I don't know that Trini's sensibility is always what they need at the head. I see. A bit too reserved, do you think, maybe? Potentially, yeah. yeah okay. All right. I'm willing to accept that. Okay. So, Vulcan Skull, shenanigans, they drive in, they parade his head, attacks the wheels what? and makes him go backwards. Who cares? No one cares. I'm no so one cares. hopeful. I mean, for what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that we would be done with the, like, unnecessary comical fast-forward shenanigans. Yeah. Or oh, re- rewind. There was some rewinding in there also. Yes. I mean, yeah, that's fair enough. Um... But you've been disappointed. Yep. I've been disappointed before by Power Rangers. I hesitate to say that you won't be disappointed again. <laughs> Don't say that. Okay, that yeah, you know what? Forget about it. I won't. Um, so, here's the deal. The Power Rangers want to morph and go try and save the day. Yeah. Right? But they can't because they will be crushed by their own giant robots. Yep. So fair Z- concern. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Zordon does a whole speech about how to look, you have to wait because the only thing to do is to be responsible. You will just die and we can't afford for you to lose. Now. Now we need to wait until we've got a solution. Yeah. Which Alpha immediately follows by going, look at the viewing globe, everything's shit. <laughs> like, he's <laughs> not, it's not great for the team. Yeah. Not helping out for not a, Not a morale-boosting exercise. Yeah. Uh, so they decide to go down and try it anyway. Uh, well, I think... Uh, I just I wouldn't skip back for a second. Sure. Because that scene where they're talking about how they can't understand how the Zords are being captured. Yeah. And Alpha says something about abstract statistics that he doesn't understand. Mm. Yeah. And then Billy is like, oh, no, I think... I can do this. I have all of the available equipment back at my lab. Yep. Available isn't even the correct word in that sentence. Right. He meant required equipment. Yeah, like, sure. It's not... Wait, did he say available? He said available equipment. It's just... It's not not a sentence that makes sense. The only equipment you have at your lab is available <laughs> because <laughs> you have right. it. That's right. And I, I think... Yeah, you're right. I didn't, I didn't catch that. Something in my brain just snapped at that second. That I'm was like, too far. That was me. too far. You can't even just get sentences right. You know? <sighs> I also question why Billy has better equipment in his garage than Zordon and Alpha have <laughs> his secret base. Yeah. Even why doesn't he kit up the base? Yeah. He just need Just take your gear to the command center. Take Alpha to, like, on a radio shack. Yeah, know? surely Zordon's got a budget for that shit. Like, yeah, hit up a radio shack. Get some stuff sorted. Leave it there. That way you won't have to keep going back and forth. Although, they can teleport... So, but it's presumably much safer to leave that equipment in the command center rather than in the garage. Well, that's only gone wrong once, hasn't it? So, <laughs> yeah. like, the command the command center times. the command center has gone wrong before too. So that's it's true. like fair point. No, no, I, I mean, just mean like it ought to be safer, <laughs> but statistically, I don't know that it is. Like, not necessarily safer from like Lord Zed, but safer from like. You know the that, cops thinking you're building a bomb. No, I mean like like that, that dickhead down the street who pilfers stuff from people's garages. Right, sure. 
Jeremy. Might, might, <laughs> fucking Jeremy. Might walk away with a mind swap machine. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but it'd be a funny episode. <laughs> Watch that unfold. No, um, Ouch. <laughs> so we get look, we get another Z party fight. Yeah. I will continue to call them Z parties rather than Z parties. That's racist. Um, <laughs> Shit. I don't think it is. Pretty sure that's not what that word means. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's a fine fight. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing particularly special about it. Except that bit where yeah, Jason jumps onto the rock ledge. Jason does... I guess it's a... Back... Like a forward flip. Yeah. But he does it by jumping back and then they play it in reverse. Yeah. So it's a particularly graceful arched back like... Yeah. But then he lands on a tiny perch... And then does a 180 and a flying Superman punch down and hits a putty in the chest. Yeah. Is that the first one that bursts? Yes. It's a good moment. It yeah. is a good moment. It is. Yeah. There's also a good moment where Zack destroys one. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then does like a funky dance move after yeah. that. And it's nice because we're shooting American, footage. American footage. You take advantage you of can, You can give, give him his personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well. yeah. It's really, I, I thought that was actually a really nice touch. It is. It's interesting to me that all of the good bits of this episode happen outside of the writing. Like, sure. that, that <laughs> fighting stuff would have been, like, done... Just as good. By the actors, right? Yeah, that, sure. that wasn't in the script. They just did it. That's the stunt guys and yeah. the choreographers going, hey, you should do that. Yeah. Sure. Then... Just want to have that on the record. Then, oh no, parenthesis... <laughs> the best parts about this episode were not written. That's then, right. oh no, parenthesis head is going to... Kill them with the giant robots. Yeah, who cares? Really need to hurry. I didn't Hang care. The, the problem with this being a three-parter is that nothing happened in this week's episode, and I didn't care once. Yeah. I think there was a bit of development with the Zords being taken over, but I feel like they could have streamlined that stuff into one side of the other episode, yeah. or just cut it out and rewritten that plot. Yeah, what was it? Was it there in this episode? Yes. Did it need to have its own episode? No. No. So it was less the Empire Strikes Back of the mutiny and more of the Phantom Menace of the mutiny. I think Attack of the Clones was fair. Unnecessary and throwing in explanations about midi chlorians that don't <laughs> make sense. Yeah. Uh, all right. Will we push on to part three? Yeah, so we'll be back next week with part three. Yes. Uh, we will at least get the Thunderzord. So there's that. Yeah. We have that to look forward to at the very least. Um, yeah. I'm sorry for us. I'm sorry for you. This is... <laughs> God. All right. We'll see you next week. This is episode number 60-something. 60 62. 62 of the podcast. We're going to watch episode 62 of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which is season two. How about we, we scrap this one? 